In the previous tutorial, I showed you how to create basic character movement with acceleration. In this tutorial, I will expand on that work and show a few more advanced features that you can add. Let's get to it. I have changed the scene a bit, but I'm continuing from the script as I left it at the end of the last tutorial. Check the description for a link to that video. First thing I'm going to show you is how to enable our player to do multiple jumps. Let's first give our player two new variables, a jump amount variable that stores the current amount of available jumps, and a max jumps variable that stores the maximum for the jump amount. For now we were just checking whether our player is on the floor for them to be able to jump. We'll need to change this condition to require that jumps are available to be used. When the player is on the floor, we can refill their jump amount, and then each time you jump, we reduce the jump amount by one. Right now, if we fall off a platform without jumping, we will still have two jumps, because jumps are only reduced when using the jump action. We can avoid this by adding another condition that triggers when the player is not on the floor, but still has the maximum amount of jumps. Inside this condition, we can just reduce the jump amount by one. This condition about falling off platforms also leads us nicely to the next feature that I want to show you. In many platformer games, there is a subtle aid given to the player nicknamed Coyote Time as a reference to the character from Looney Tunes. This aid is an extra window of time for jumping when leaving the edge of platforms. This helps avoid frustration when timing tight jumps. To add this to our movement, let's start by adding a timer. You could do this with the timer node added in the editor, but I generally prefer adding these timers in code. The timer needs a variable for the reference. We also need to add it as a child node in the ready function and set its one-shot property to true, so the timer doesn't repeat as it does by default. The timer emits a timeout signal when it's finished, so let's connect that to a new method called jumpTimerTimeout. Inside this timeout method, just reduce the jump amount by one. Now we need to change the physics process to include the logic for the timer. We can start the timer inside the elif condition for falling off platforms with maximum jump amount. Add a new condition that checks whether the timer is stopped so it doesn't start again every frame. Inside the condition, we can start the timer instead of just reducing the jump amount immediately. Create a new exported variable to adjust the amount of jump delay or coyote time available. The timer needs to be stopped when we jump. No aid needs to be provided once the player has already jumped. The timer can also stop while we are on the floor. That's all that's needed for coyote time. Adjusting the jump delay to feel invisible but helpful will require quite a bit of testing. Speaking of testing, while planning for this tutorial, I found something. I found a way of adding a simple multiplier to our player's movement. In this example, I'm using it to slow down the player if they are touching a body of water. The water is an area node with the body entered and body exited signals connected to simple methods that check whether the touching body has an in-water property. That property is then adjusted to true while the body is touching the area. This is a quick and lazy implementation, just to show you the idea. Inside the player script, let's add that in-water property that the area is looking for. Let's also add a new exported water multiplier to adjust the amount of slowdown to the player's movement. Inside the physics process, I start off with a new modifier variable set to 1. If the player is in water, we can multiply that modifier by the water multiplier. Doing it this way will let us chain multiple modifiers for cumulative effects. We can multiply the movement vector inside our move and slide method by the modifier. The trick to avoid this breaking everything is just to divide the movement vector by the modifier after this move and slide. This will essentially undo the multiplication so that the movement is only adjusted temporarily. That was pretty simple, wasn't it? There is another even simpler feature that we can add to conclude this tutorial. To give our player the ability to move a bit faster, we can have a running action that increases our maximum speed temporarily. 
To create this, let's add a new running speed along our normal speed variable. Now the only line we need to change is the line where the horizontal input is multiplied by the speed variable. Let's make it include a ternary if expression that makes use of the running speed instead when the run action is being pressed. Ternary ifs are handy for assigning different values based on a short condition. That's all you need for this little feature. If your acceleration is low, it will take a while to build up to this new maximum speed. To make the acceleration snappier, you would need to make adjustments to that also. I couldn't find a simple enough way of doing that to include in this tutorial. This will have to do for now. With that, we've made our movement controller include more features and customizability. You can use these features in creative ways too, like adjusting the max jumps based on upgrades the player finds, or set it to zero to remove jumping entirely. Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful, and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. The project files are available for download in the video description. Please like the video and subscribe to support us in making more content like this, and thank you for watching.